Hi there, my name is Kaushik Pavani. I'm a senior applied scientist at Amazon. And today I'm going to be talking about CPP AutoML. CPP is the name of my team and it stands for classification and policy platform. AutoML is automated machine learning. CPP AutoML is a self-service tool that lets business teams to build a machine learning based product classifier and run it at Amazon scale. Our vision is to democratize machine learning that is, we make it very easy for anybody to build an ML model. No need to understand machine learning or write a single line of code. Let's start with the customer problem. Amazon store complies to all local, national, and international regulations. For example, we don't air transport products with large batteries. Or as a policy, we don't sell firearms. As another example, a business team may want to identify face masks in the catalog to prevent price gouging. These are just three examples. But just like these examples, we enforce hundreds of thousands of rules every day. One of the ways to enforce these rules is to build a product classifier and enforce a policy on the resulting classifications. So today, I'll use our tenets to explain what CPP AutoML is. The first tenet, and probably the most important one, is that we enable our business users to build a classifier without any scientist or software developer involvement. Subsequently, I'll talk about how we take the data-first approach to solve our customer problems. And finally, I'll talk about one of our latest innovations to achieve few-shot learning. All right, let's see how we make it easy for anybody to create a production-worthy classifier and execute it at Amazon scale. Imagine a business user who may want to classify face masks. If they take the ML route, they'll end up following the ML model lifecycle. First, they need to assemble a team to gather data, and then, Get help from a scientist to build a classifier and make sure that the classifier is not biased. If the classifier is not accurate, we may need to go back and get more data. We also need software developers to push the model to production and run it at Amazon scale. Finally, an audit team needs to make sure that the classifier is taking reasonable decisions on behalf of the customers. Eventually, if the performance of the classifier degrades, we need to repeat the cycle all over again. So we need a team of scientists, software developers, auditors to launch a product classifier and maintain it. CPP AutoML automates all parts of this flywheel except for the data collection. To collect data, we provide a simple UI where our customers can label products, for example, as disposable masks or t-shirt masks. Every other aspect of classifier creation is automated. Even the labeling is assisted in the sense that the system suggests what to label next. So, did we succeed in launching product classifiers without scientists and engineers? To answer this, let's look at our adoption data. We started in Jan 2020. At that time, we decided to give our customers two options. One, they could assemble their own teams of labelers, scientists, and engineers and build custom models and launch it in production. Or two, use CPP AutoML to author classifiers using just labelers. So, in the last 22 months, our customers have created a few hundred ML-based product classifiers and launch them to production. During the same time period, CPP AutoML adoption took off and today there are thousands of classifiers making billions of classifications a day, which is at least an order of magnitude greater than the custom model adoption. Now, let me talk to you about the data-first approach we take to build the product classifier. You may remember that our customer comes to us with just an intent, like, I need to classify face masks. We assist them in curating the label dataset first. For example, we have hundreds of millions of items in the Amazon catalog. See the pictorial representation on the left. No one has time to label it completely. Therefore, we use two broad techniques, active learning and active teaching to surface the most relevant products to be labeled. Let's first look at active learning. Here, the machine may help explore all the unique face masks in the catalog and at the same time, exploit the learnings it has had so far to surface the most confusing products. For example, is this a t-shirt or a mask? Moving on to active teaching, customers may decide to teach the computer new concepts by searching a product and labeling them. So while we assist our customers to gather data, we also make sure to follow the best practices in model building. I'd like to talk to you about target-aware active learning in particular. The goal of target-aware active learning is to compute relative priority of each class of interest. To compute the priority, we take into account the current estimated accuracy represented by the solid flag and the target accuracy which is represented by the checkered flag. 
In this example, the classifier has already met the target accuracy for carnival masks, while it's doing pretty poorly on the t-shirt masks. In this situation, we automatically set the highest priority to t-shirt mask class so that we surface more t-shirt mask examples to our customers with the hope that the classifier will improve. As a last topic, I'd like to introduce you to one of our latest innovations that helps our customers to achieve higher precision and recall with fewer labels. As we saw a few minutes ago, we are fortunate to have high adoption. We have thousands of classifiers running in production and we have all their associated data. For example, our customers labeled 2,500 products to build a kangaroo meat classifier. Similarly, they may have labeled 3,000 products to build a pen classifier. Now the question is, how can we help our customers build a new classifier, say a pencil classifier, as quickly as possible? Now both pen and pencils have similar form factors and they serve similar purposes as writing instruments. Can we borrow our learnings from the past classifiers and apply them to new classifiers that are being authored? We use transfer learning techniques to accomplish this. So that brings me to the end of my talk. Thank you for your interest and hope you enjoyed learning about the complex problems we are trying to solve. And if you want to join our team, just search for classification and policy platform in Amazon Jobs website or click on the link below. Have a great day.